Hello gorgeous people, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with two Android One handsets. On the left here we've got the Motorola One and on the right the Nokia 7.1. They're both decent mid-range smartphones, 269 quid you can pick up the Motorola One, the Nokia 7.1 will cost you 300 quid here in the UK. They both sport respectable specs for that low asking price and of course a nice vanilla version of Android complete with those guaranteed updates that Android One brings. So let's do a full side by side of the hardware, the software, everything you need to know so you know which one might be best for you and don't forget to hit that subscribe, ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers! So of course stick them side by side and there's not a tremendous amount of difference in terms of the dimensions and the general build. The Motorola One is a slightly bigger smartphone at 5.9 inches compared with a 5.84 inch Nokia 7.1 but as you can see there in terms of the general height, uh, the girth and everything there's very little between them. Both the Moto and the Nokia as you can see there support a screen that fills most of the front of each smartphone. Uh, you do get a bit of notch action up top of course to help those displays reach to the very top edge of the smartphone. Down below however the bezels are a bit thicker as you can see there you get a nice bit of branding in both of them as well. The Nokia's is slightly thicker but there's not exactly much in it. And to be honest, both the Moto One and the Nokia 7.1 nice and comfortable to clutch. You've got those nice curved uh, corners so they don't jut into your palm or anything like that. And sort of reasonably compact compared with a lot of modern mobiles, although in both cases you will be struggling to stretch up to the top of the display to pull down the notifications panel, like so. Thankfully here on the Moto One you can just drag down that notifications panel from anywhere on the screen which definitely helps. Flip them around you'll see that both the Moto the One and the Nokia 7.1 sport a glossy glass finish. Both do pick up dust and grime quite easily but thankfully in these darker hues they do a fairly good job of masking all the sort of greasy prints and bits so you won't have to be constantly buffing them up. Of the pair we see we like the Nokia 7.1's design slightly more. It's got some more interesting elements going on uh, such as the nice bit of shiny chamfron around the corners there and that 6000 series aluminium frame just uh, helps to break up the overall glossy effect and just make it a bit more distinctive. Nice bit of trim around the uh, the camera lens there as well. That said the funky Motorola logo branding inside the fingerprint sensor there on the Moto1 is quite nifty and you also get full P2I rated splash resistance certification here on the Motorola One. You don't get any kind of certification here on the Nokia 7.1 but it will be absolutely fine when using it in the rain and things like that. As for those fingerprint sensors they are nice and responsive. Quick tap and you are basically straight into your desktops no hanging about or anything. Uh, so pretty responsive in both cases as well. As you can see there the, uh, the Nokia seems to be ever so slightly more responsive uh, but there's not exactly much in it. Now you can probably tell straight off just by looking at these displays that there is a clear difference between them. They are both IPS panels and there's very little difference in terms of the size. 5.9 inches on the Moto 1, 5.84 inches on the Nokia 7.1 so the Nokia is ever so slightly more compact. But of course that notch isn't quite as chunky up top as well so that's always a bonus. The Nokia 7.1 screen is actually sharper. It's a full HD plus panel uh, compared with the HD plus here on the Moto 1. That's most noticeable if you start to flip into for instance your apps tray you can see the text is just ever so slightly crisper here on the Nokia. And if you stick a couple of images side by side as well for instance here you'll notice the finer detail and is a bit more clear here on these little cakey things which I forget the name of. And of course we prefer the colour output here on the Nokia 7.1 as well it's ever so slightly more punchy. You can actually tweak the colour output here on the Motorola One if you dive into the colour mode and tap onto Vibrant and uh, that just gives colours a bit of a boost. And as you'll see if you stick it side by side with the Nokia we still personally reckon at least that the, uh, the colours, there's those vivid vibrant hues just sort of shine a little bit more, they're a bit more poppy here on the Nokia smartphone. Again not a tremendous amount of difference but it's just nice for sort of bringing your photos and your video to life. And as you'd expect if you dive into the display settings you get the usual night light mode so you can filter the blue light at night just makes for a nice easy comfortable on the eye experience and you've got the usual ambient display and everything as well. And of course one other major advantage that the Nokia 7.1 has over the Motorola is the fact that the screen supports HDR10 content. So you can actually scale up SDR level content to near HDR quality and it should support HDR from the likes of YouTube and Netflix. At the moment if you dive into Netflix uh, you can't actually stream content in HDR right now as I speak. So as you see uh, the likes of Annihilation just appears HD not HDR but hopefully uh, full certification should happen soon and that will therefore be available. Now as mentioned before these are both Android One handsets. Well that means you just get a nice clean vanilla version of Android with no tinkering by Motorola or Nokia so it's very straightforward it's basically just your Google apps your standard Google experience no overlays no 
tweaks to the design or anything so you'll notice in terms of the general look and feel they are both basically the same. And one of the benefits of Android One is that you're guaranteed uh, two version updates so they should both get an update to Android Pie imminently. At the moment they're both just sat on Android Oreo version 8.1.0 on the Nokia and the Motorola but as I say Pie should be coming soon and then you also guaranteed an update to Android Q whatever that may be uh, this time next year. And those security patches should be ticking through every sort of month or so as well to keep you up to date. Now even though the general uh, user experience is the same, Motorola has actually chucked in its Moto app here on the Motorola One, something obviously you don't get on the Nokia 7.1. Unfortunately here on the Motorola One it's more of a scaled back experience compared with a lot of other Motorola phones. So if you go on the Moto Actions you don't get that proper one-handed mode for instance, you just get the double twist uh, to activate the camera and the double karate chop for torch which is just the best thing ever. Ah, ah. Particularly good for blinding your foes. But that's basically it, and then in motor display you just get the uh, notifications phasing in and out when the uh, display is off, so they will just uh, briefly pop onto the screen and then bugger off again. And that is basically it for the general functionality. Apart from that, it's exactly the same. So what's actually running the show? Well, it is a Qualcomm chipset in both of these smartphones, but it's a Snapdragon 625 here on the Motorola One, and it's a Snapdragon 636 here on the Nokia 7.1. Motorola One you get 4 gigs of RAM as standard, whereas here on the Nokia 7.1 it's 3 or 4 gigs depending on which model you buy. And for your everyday experience it's absolutely fine, as you can see you will see the odd stammer and stutter here and there as you're sort of scrolling through your menus and doing your various bits. Uh, but on the whole uh, they load up apps basically at the same sort of pace. So if you just tap on the YouTube one at the same time, you see it's more or less the same sort of time that they pop your content up onto the screen. If we dive on into Geekbench 4, you'll see that there is a clear difference there, however, in terms of the single core score here on the Nokia 7.1, it's definitely the stronger of the two, but when it comes to the multitasking, it seems to be more or less evenly matched. So let's say playing some tunes over Spotify, streaming some video over Netflix, things like that, a bit of Skype session, absolutely fine. If you are going to be wanting to do a bit of something like PUBG, then we'd recommend steering clear of both of these handsets, to be perfectly honest. So you will see stutters and stammers on either of these handsets uh, while you are playing a bit of PUBG, for instance. Uh, so if you just dive on into the settings, you'll see in the graphics section, it's been set to smooth graphics and medium frame rate on both of these blowers. And even on that low detail settings, as I say, you will see stutters and stammers uh, during everyday use anyway. And as I say, even on those low detail settings, you will still see the odd stumble as you're playing the odd uh, frame rate where it just judders. Um, it's just about playable, so you know, if, you, if you're absolutely desperate, then go for it. But to be perfectly honest, if you want a gaming smartphone for less than 300 quid, we'd say look at the Honor range instead, the likes of the Honor Play. Still very affordable, and with the likes of that GPU Turbo update, you can actually get a pretty damn good playing experience. As the battery tech, there's again very little between these smartphones. They both have a 3000 milliamp cell stashed inside, so you'll easily make it through a full day, even with pretty full on use. And of course, you get the usual battery save mode and everything. The only annoying thing about the Nokia is the fact that you can't uh, get the battery percentage displayed up top for whatever reason. I've tried looking everywhere for that feature and it's certainly not here, unlike on the Motorola. Although to be fair, it's so, so dinky here on the Moto that you have to squint really, really close if you actually want to see what the battery level's at. As for the storage, you get 64 gigs of storage here on the Moto One as standard. And you can also expand it via micro SD memory card as well, up to 256 gigs. Unfortunately, on the uh, Nokia, it's not quite as strong. You can get a 64 gig model, but in its base level, it's just 32 gigs, as you can see there. Fills up pretty fast, although once again, you can expand it via micro SD memory card, this time up to 400 gigs. Flip reverse both these phones, and as you can see, you get a dual lens rear camera with a nice bit of Zeiss branding in the case of the Nokia. It's a fairly similar hardware setup as well. You get a 13 megapixel primary lens, f2.0 here on the Moto 1, and that's backed by a simple 2 megapixel depth sensor. Here on the Nokia 7.1, it's a 12 megapixel primary lens, f1.9, so ever so slightly better in those low light situations. And that's backed by a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now if we dive on into the camera apps, you'll see they offer quite different features and experiences as well. Both have a form of sort of motion mode, which basically allows you to, uh, to capture a little snippet of video with every photo that you take, just brings your photo gallery to life. 
You've got the usual HDR smarts and everything as well. And you also get lots of bonus modes here. In the case of the Nokia 7 one, you've got the Pro modes with uh, full manual controls. Now, something you can also dive into here on the Moto one, so the quick tap here into the manual modes. And as you can see, they both allow you to tweak the likes of the ISO levels, the contrast, things like that. And they've both got nifty on-screen wheel dials as well, so you can ever so quickly uh, tweak that and see the results in real time. You've also got a bit of support for Google Lens if you want to point your phone at something and maybe potentially get some interesting information about it. And as you can see, you've got a bunch of uh, bonus camera modes in both cases as well. You've got the likes of the live Bokka here on the Nokia 7.1 or Portrait as it's basically known here on the Motorola and that just allows you to shoot a nice crisp silhouette of your subject uh, while blurring the background around them. You've got a few other bits here on the Nokia such as panorama and square mode because get panorama here on the Motorola as well but you also got the nifty spot colour and what this can do is it basically if you just tap uh, a colourful item on your screen it will then isolate that colour and it will then make everything else black and white. You can sort of tweak the settings as you can see there. It uh, removes the hue from the table. But of course it can be a little bit bulky so you have to uh, sort of play around with it a bit to get it to work. But still quite nifty all the same. And when it comes to the video stuff as well, uh, not too much difference between the two. As you can see you've got slow motion and time lapse on both of them. You can also stream live to YouTube or YouTube or Facebook here in the case of the Nokia. And when it comes to the video you can shoot at up to 4K Ultra HD resolution with both of these blowers. Image stabilization at the level is of course a wee bit poo, uh, so we'd recommend standing as still as possible if you're gonna do so. And of course here on the uh, Nokia 7.1, you do have the weird AR mode as well, which just allows you to do various things like turn yourself into a a bison. Hooray for technological advancements. On the subject of these front facing cameras, it's an 8 megapixel front facing snapper in both of these blowers. There's an f2.2 aperture here on the Motorola, f2.0 here on the Nokia, so we're getting slightly better in those low light conditions. Let's just turn off this bison thing because it's absolutely cack. The Motorola one seems to be quite good in the sort of high dynamic range of conditions. You do actually have HDR setting on it, but either will do the job just for your basic shareable selfie. So, uh, oh yeah, there we go. I forgot to mention as well, of course, you do get a front facing LED flash here on the Motorola one, whereas it's more of a screen flash function here on the Nokia. So if we just turn that on and take a picture, as you can see, it just uh, flashes the screen instead. And that, in a nutshell, is the Motorola One versus the Nokia 7.1. Definitely let us know which you think might be best for you in the comments down below. You can see the Nokia 7.1 does sport the better specs and, of course, has the better display as well with that HDR10 smarts. But you may prefer the Motorola One. It'll definitely be good to hear why, so let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers, everyone. Love you.